What's up everyone, welcome back to Tokyo Japan. My name is Joe Allen and in this video I'm going to share five mistakes I commonly see beginner photographers make and my solutions on how to solve them. I should probably point out I am so stoked to be back in Tokyo by the way. I just, I love this place so much. Alright, so issue number one that I see all of the time and that is wonky horizons. Now it may not be obvious at first, but when you review back your images afterwards uh, and once you spot it, you can't help but not spot it anymore. So many people are taking pictures and they're not aware of how wonky uh, they may be taking those. So first and foremost, make sure you have your horizon dead straight across the center of your image if you have that. Um, otherwise, you can always fix it in your editing software, so in Photoshop or in Lightroom. Just wonkiness is really, uh, it's really easy to spot once you go looking for it. If you find yourself notoriously bad with wonky horizons, then maybe some extra tips you can take to improve that is to take your time with things, use two hands on the camera and steady yourself with a steady posture. In fact, most cameras will actually have a gyroscope built in and you should be able to enable it on both the viewfinder and on the screen, um, so you can keep those steady Particularly if you're shooting with a tripod, you've really got no excuse. So my second mistake that I see quite commonly is a complete misunderstanding of white balance. Uh, now, white balance is the metering that you set in your camera to set the color temperature of your images. Now, the color temperature comes from your main light source. Now, that could either be the sunlight, or it could be a tungsten light, or it could be a fluorescent bulb, something like that. So you need to set the white balance on your camera to the main source of light. That way you'll get truly accurate whites um, and colors across the board with your images. Otherwise you may end up with very warm and orangey images or very blue and sometimes greeny images. If you shoot in RAW as well, you can also change this in your post-production, but generally it's good to get it good in camera. Uh, these days, cameras are actually really good at setting auto white balance as well, um, so that may even be your solution to solve things. To change your white balance, you can either go into the settings or look on the back of your camera or on the top, you may have a button that is just labeled as WB um, and you'll go through there. Pretty much every camera will have an icon related to the light source that it's matching to. So if you really have no idea, then uh, just match it to the icon. And if you really want to be accurate with your white balance, then you can purchase a gray card and then you can match up to your images um, with the gray card in front and then that way everything's going to be accurate. Okay, so if there's anything, anything that could be the most important thing that you really don't want to make a mistake on, it's this. Having blurry or non-sharp images. I can't stress enough how important it is to get your images pin sharp. You know, you can make a mistake on everything else, but honestly, just get your images sharp. To me, nothing stands out as amateur more than if your image isn't sharp in the first place. Now, some ways to improve that. Uh, you can either shoot with a faster shutter speed, you can maintain a steadier posture, you could use a tripod, um, or you could use a higher ISO if you're in low light situation. So many people come to me with images and they say, hey, can I get your feedback on this? And Beyond anything, uh, the one thing that really, really stands out is when your images just aren't sharp. Another thing to, to take note of with that is uh, the way that aperture plays into depth of field and sharpness of images. The larger your aperture, the less you actually have in focus. So you may actually find some people take photos of people and the nose is perfectly in focus and the eyes are soft, they're not in focus. Just use a slightly smaller aperture um, or set your focus correctly on the eye and uh, that will really stand out differently. But when I say shakiness and blurriness, I'm usually talking about when people have taken an image and they're clearly not stood very steady whilst they're taking it. Um, just study your posture and you'll get great results. My next tip is related to composition. Now we all know that finding great composition is really hard and quite troublesome sometimes. However, this particular aspect, I'd say, comes down to spatial awareness. And uh, I see it a lot, and people maybe aren't aware of the scene that they're in and taking the photos, and they don't realize that just a small adjustment can actually make a huge improvement on the image. So a few things that are quite commonly seen, uh, taking pictures of people and things are uncomfortably cropped off, so maybe someone's head is cropped off a little bit uncomfortably, or the bottom of their feet are cropped off if it's a full body shot. Or maybe you're taking a picture of a building and you've cropped the top of it and it just looks a bit odd. Um, or perhaps it's something that's maybe symmetrical and you haven't taken it quite in the middle. Uh, it's just ever so slightly off center. If you can just keep that spatial awareness um, apparent in your images, it makes a huge difference.
Okay, so my final tip on uh, how to overcome the five mistakes that beginner photographers make, and that is setting your exposure correctly. Now this is incredibly common that people are maybe unaware of how to properly set the exposure on their camera, and that is completely fine. However, it is not big and it is not clever to shoot in manual all of the time. I mean, I feel like a few years ago I fell into that trap where I was always shooting manual. Now quite often I actually shoot an aperture priority or I'll shoot something else. Just let something within the camera do something automatic for you to maintain a correct exposure because what you don't want to happen is go somewhere and miss a shot because it is poorly exposed or something happens and you've missed it because you're on old settings for when it was exposed to something else. The other thing to bear in mind is that on your camera itself, in the viewfinder when you're shooting, you will see a little light meter. If you can get that meter as close to the center as possible by adjusting your settings, that means you're going to have a perfectly exposed image. The meters within cameras are really, really good these days. Uh, another thing that a lot of people kind of make the mistake of uh, through reading old literature is they are afraid of high ISOs. And I'm talking like anything above 600, which to me is not high at all. If you have a camera that was bought within the last four or five years or something, you could be pretty confident to shoot you know, 3,200, maybe even higher. If you've got a high-end camera, you could shoot anything up to maybe 20,000 with your ISO and still be able to get shots. Now, there will be some noise involved. That's true across anything, but what would you rather have? An image that's kind of noisy or no image at all because it's poorly exposed? For me, I'd rather have an image that's correctly exposed. If it comes with noise, it comes with noise. That's just down to the location and any other light that you maybe can't control. So yeah, be aware of your highlights, be aware of your shadows and your overall surroundings. If you can, try not to clip either of those. Uh, generally, you wanna maintain your highlights. You can always raise the shadows in your post-production. Uh, so you don't want any blown out skies that are supposed to be blue and they've come out completely white. Um, but pay attention to your light meter in the viewfinder and uh, you'll be great. All right, so that concludes my top five tips on how to solve beginner problems with photography. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up with the like button below. Leave a comment of your own tips or any of your own experiences of how you've improved your photography recently. And also, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I'm creating loads of content about photography and I am loving Japan. I'm creating so much whilst I'm here. Uh, I'm also posting loads on my Instagram, so you can go and give me a little follow over there as well. All right, so that's everything. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later. See ya, bye bye.